Hi, my name is Heather Lytle, and I'm going to be your instructor for environmental biology this fall semester. I'm excited for us to go through ma the material together, and hopefully you'll be able to understand some implications of humans and the world in which we live. A few things before we get started, um, we need to make sure that you can access different things that you'll need to be successful in the class. First of all, you need to have the textbook purchased, Visualizing Environmental Science, the actual ISBN number is included on the syllabus. Uh, your syllabus, which is loaded in Blackboard in our course, you can find it there. Um, I've also included a course schedule, which includes our exam. So you want to make sure that you put those on your personal calendar so that you can keep track of when they come up. And my contact information is also on the syllabus. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is with my Tarrant County email, which is on the syllabus. And um, I'm available for office hours as well as by appointment if you have any questions that I can help you with. Chapter one is an introduction to environmental biology and the title in your book is called Environmental Challenges That We Face. There's a few things that we want to make sure that we learn as we go through this chapter. We want to be able to define environmental biology, sustainability, we want to list ways of living more sustainable. I'm not sure if you um, have a good definition of what sustainability is in your head, but um, at the end of this lesson, hopefully you'll start to formalize that. We want to be able to explain how the development of a sustainable society is affected by economics and politics. We want to identify steps of the scientific method. Um, you might, when someone says environmental biology, you might think of someone that's an activist and really concerned about the environment. But what we're going to be doing is trying to stay as objective as possible, making sure that we're applying the principles of science as we study environmental biology. We want to apply the scientific processes to an understanding of environmental problems. And we want to see how graphs and statistics are useful with environmental science. Um, lastly, we want to quantify and analyze the impact of a lifestyle on the environment. And that'll be one of your pieces of homework for the week is to actually look at your personal um, impact um, on the environment. So as we look at environmental challenges, um, you can see here in this graph uh, something that's pretty significant. Let's, let's get it oriented with this graph. And um, whenever you have a graph to look at, you first want to look at the X and the Y axis in order to see the story that's being told. And so you can see on this graph that time in years is on the x-axis. And it ranges from um, 8,000 years before Christ. And you see as we go along the x-axis, we come to time zero um, and then another 2,000 years. So this is the past 10,000 years in the history of the Earth. And we can look on the y-axis and see that it's measuring the human population in billions of people. So you can see that in 8,000 BC, there were uh, much, much less than uh, half a billion people on the planet. And that stayed pretty constant uh, through the time period until we became um, uh, after zero BC. And you can see uh, a little blip in time when the Black Death Plague happened in Europe. And then if you look in the most recent history in the last... Uh, I don't know, 800 years, you see a huge spike in the population. And the, what's recorded on this graph is that in 2015, there were 7.3 billion people on the earth. Well, when we think about the amount of people and the things that they require, uh, you can see that there's um, not been a change in resources on the planet. There's uh, the same amount of land, same amount of water, same amount of uh, animals, all those different things. And so we have to make sure that um, one of the challenges is how is the environment providing for all the people that are here on our planet, whether it be for fresh drinking water or food or shelter, all the basic resources that we need for life. Um, one of the things that's a, a, a challenge um, that scientists and politicians and economists have to consider is the effect of poverty. Um, you'll see that many of that in the in your chapter one, there's a, a graph that shows the globe and it get the color codes um, where the highest areas of poverty are located around the globe. And so uh, where there's areas of poverty, we see certain patterns. 
Um, another thing that we're going to be talking about, another challenge would be the resource management. Whether you're talking about non-renewable resources like uh, coal and oil and gas, as well as renewable resources, um, and how are those distributed among the human population. Um, another environmental challenge is looking at um, the ecological footprint, um, and, and that's something that'll be part of your homework is looking at your ecological footprint. But based on the resources that you use, what kind of impact are you having personally on the resources on the earth? So one of the things we want to define um, in chapter one is what is environmental science? And it's, it's the study of humanity's relationship with other living organisms and the physical environment. So you're talking about living things and non-living things and how um, hum humanity, how human beings have affected those relationships. Um, and so we can be talking about uh, living things, which we call biotic factors, they're living. This would include plants, animals, bacteria, fungi. It includes abiotic factors. A means without, so without life, non-living factors. Uh, this would be climate, light, temperature, uh, topography, whether you're on the mountains or in the desert and you're, um, how far away you are from the oceans, um, precipitation, soil, wind, all those things would be abiotic factors that affect uh, living things. And one thing that's super cool about environmental science, and this is one of the reasons why I studied this in graduate school, is because it's multidisciplinary. And so I could never pick my favorite subject in college. And so environmental science was kind of a sweet spot for me because it kind of combined all the sciences. Um, it combines biology, chemistry, geology, meteorology, law, social science, engineering, even statistics and math. And so um, environmental science is a very dynamic and exciting field to go into. Um, and it's something that I, I love to study and, and talk about. So um, here's an example um, of an environmental problem, and it kind of shows us the interdisciplinary approach to environmental science. And so this problem um, talks about a uh, area of fishing, see in the middle here it says it's a depleted fishery. So the place where the fishermen go to fish to get fish to um, take home to sell for food, um, is there's fewer and fewer fish. And so why? Why are there fewer fish? And so some of the considerations are um, environmental economics. Uh, we can look at population biology, how many fish are needed to reproduce and replace the current population. Uh, we could look at anthropology, which would include religion, and what is the cultural value of fishing at this certain uh, part of the world. We can look at chemistry. We can look at the water chemistry, the amount of oxygen available for the fish, um, the kind of nutrients that are available in the water for the fish. Uh, the pH, is the pH right? Um, does that affect the fish population? We can look at ecology. How does the reef support fish? Uh, the coral reef is going to be a food source, and so um, is the reef healthy enough to support the fish population? And then we can look at political science. How do we develop equitable fishing policies so that everybody has the resources that they need? So that's just a, a little example of how uh, environmental science is actually an interdisciplinary science. So one of the things you're going to do this week for your homework is online I have a link for you to go to do your ecological footprint. And um, it's a measure of the human's demand on nature. And it can be looked at from a community standpoint or from a culture standpoint or even a personal standpoint. And so you're going to take this little quiz, it doesn't take very long at all. And you're going to look to see about your, your carbon footprint, um, uh, your, your building footprint, uh, how it affects forest and croplands and pasture, and um, uh, just, just what the impact is um, from, from your lifestyle. And so that's something uh, that you're going to do. And uh, it's interesting, if you uh, look on that website, the 2015 data that's provided shows that the U.S. total ecological footprint is over eight global acres per person. That's how much land would be needed to provide the resources for um, life in America. And then if you look at the total 
uh, U.S. bio capacity, uh, eight, over eight is what we use, and the capacity is 3.6. So there's not enough land to provide all of the needs that we're putting on the environment. And so uh, there's a deficit of four and a half global acres per person. Um, there's not enough land to supply the resources that we need in America. And so you often see um, going to other countries to find resources. That's why we ship a bunch of stuff into America um, and are dependent upon other countries for providing certain resources for us. So when we look at environmental impact, there's really three things that you're gonna look at. There's um, the impact would be equal to the number of people, the affluence, the amount of money resources that are available, and the uh, environmental effects of the technologies used to provide the resources. And so this is a model that's been around for about 50 years. Um, you don't need to be able to plug numbers in and do a calculation, but you need to recognize that those are the three different things that are used to calculate the environmental impact. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, sustainability is one of the things that we want to make sure that we can define, and it's something that we'll be talking about as we go through the course of the semester. But sustainability is a search for balance between ecological stability and human progress. And so there's always this give and take. There's a kind of a cost and benefit uh, consideration whenever we talk about different things, because a lot of times um, protecting things and keeping them pristine come at a high cost. And so um, we want to make sure that there's a balance. Um, sustainable development is something that's um, important. And you can talk about, uh, you can hear different people that are developing uh, cities, developing companies, developing uh, new resources. They're going to be talking about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. And so that's something that's, um, it's nice that companies are starting to think future uh, forward and not just being in the moment about what they need. They're trying to think about what would be the consequences going down the road. So um, what are some threats to stability, sustainability? What are some things that keep it from uh, being something easy to manage? Um, so we use non-renewable resources as if they were unlimited. Uh, Non-renewable resources would include coal, um, oil, and gas. Uh, we don't think twice about filling our car with um, gasoline and driving, driving, driving. Um, we use renewable resources faster than they can be replenished. And so that's something that um, is a threat to sustainability. Uh, pollution, that's a, a man-made concern that has affected our environment. Um, increased population on the planet, uh, that increases the demand on resources and also increased waste production, uh, which is a problem because it doesn't go away. And then activities of humans are disruptive to natural processes. Um, and so these are all things that can affect the sustainability of our, of our planet. Um, also in chapter one, you'll read about the role of science. And it's important that as we study environmental biology that we remember that we're doing this as a scientist and we wanna have an orderly logical method of understanding our environment. Um, this uh, includes collecting data. So you're gonna see a bunch of tables and graphs and charts as we go through this semester. Um, we want to be objective. Um, we want to read um, articles that are published in scientific journals and not something that's just posted online. We wanna make sure that we have a credible source if we're reading and referencing some information. Um, good science is repeatable. Um, I'm not sure if you ever did a science for a project in high school or in junior high, but a, a good science for a project can be repeated over and over and over again, and you get relatively the same results and not just haphazard uh, results from your experiment. Science is also an ongoing and dynamic process. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that uh, you start with a hypothesis and you design an experiment to test that hypothesis and you come up with an answer. And often that answer will lead you to a next hypothesis and another question. And so it just keeps going and going and going in that cycle. Science never proves anything. It will demonstrate, show, correlate, and illustrate relationships. And so, uh, like I said, science is always asking the next question and, and looking for uh, patterns in the data. Um, here's a good graph that's from your chapter one that shows the scientific method. We're gonna start with recognizing a problem or an unanswered question. 
We'll develop a hypothesis to explain the problem. We'll make predictions. We'll design and perform an experiment to test the hypothesis and then analyze the data uh, to see if we can reach conclusions. And then we'll answer the question, does the hypothesis predict uh, reality? Do we do our hypothesis really show to be true? And if yes, then you can go back and repeat your experiment. If no, you need to go back up to the top and revise your hypothesis and start again through the process. But the, the bottom line is that we're gonna share new knowledge with other scientists and it's gonna cause new questions to arise. And then uh, maybe there's a way for our scientists to test hyp your hypothesis in different ways from the way that you first did. Um, anyway, that just continues to grow the body of scientific, scientific evidence. Here's an example of using the scientific method to an environmental problem. There can be a, a scientific assessment. Um, they define the problem, the hypothesis is tested, and models are constructed to see how the present situation developed and to predict future courses of events. Um, there's risk analysis taken. If we do this, then what's gonna happen? If we intervene, then this could be prevented. Um, what are the pros and cons of these different actions? Um, often the public will be engaged, especially if you're using government money in order to accomplish a project. And so the community members um, can come together to be able to give their feedback before proceeding with a project. Oftentimes there's political considerations that, um, especially like I said, if government money is being used and uh, maybe an environmental impact statement might be, have to be made before a project proceeds. And then there's long-term environmental management that uh, the results of any action taken should be carefully monitored to make sure that there's not some kind of negative consequence to the environment. So that's just kind of an overview of uh, environmental biology. Um, we're gonna delve into the different pieces of it as we go through the 16 weeks of this course. Uh, this week, as you can see on your uh, course schedule, um, you're going to watch this video, which you just did. This was video one, so you can check it off the box. You've already done that. Uh, you need to read chapter one, and you might develop a pattern of um, taking notes from the chapter in, in parallel to your lecture notes, and that they ought to fit together pretty smoothly. Um, and that'll be a good way for you to um, test and make sure that you're getting the, the main ideas out of the chapter as you're reading. But you do want to read the chapter. I have a, a really nice little video for you to watch. It's a five minute video called Tragedy of the Commons, which kind of is a, an example of the sustainability question and hopefully will make you stop to think about uh, your impact that you have on the earth, as well as doing your ecological footprint. Links for both the videos and the ecological footprint are on uh, the lesson in, in Blackboard. And then I want you to do a discussion board. Uh, discussion board number one, um, you will, uh, after doing all of your assignment, you'll go to the discussion board and answer the prompt. And then um, I need you to respond to at least two of your peers. So don't wait until uh, Friday morning to do the discussion board um, because other people are waiting to see what your ideas are so that they can respond back to it. So I'm grading not only your response, but I'm also grading your thoughtful reply to two of your peers. Um, one of the things that is uh, important in the discussion board is to maintain the, the standard of um, not being judgmental, of being uh, asking good, thoughtful questions, um, not picking on people, but really having a, a good, encouraging, collaborative exercise. Um, I'll be jumping on the discussion boards as well and contributing, and so I'm excited for us to be able to interact together that way. Um, that's one of, of the neat features about this course and how we can interact with each other because it is an asynchronous course. We're not going to be together face to face for class and my uh, lessons, my uh, lectures will be recorded. And so the discussion board is going to be a key way for us to interact together. Uh, so all of these assignments are due by the end of the day on Friday and I'll be looking forward to seeing what your responses are. Thank you so much. I'm excited to get to work with you this semester.